Here are two D-Link DHP200 Ethernet over power line adapters and I have been using them for over two years and here for demonstration purpose I'm going to connect them to a power strip just to show you the behaviors and the symptoms. Um, in practice when you are actually setting up a home network using Ethernet or power line adapters you should not connect them to a power strip you should connect them directly to the wall outlet so um, here you can see we have one unit which is here and I plug into the power and you can see the power light is on and the power line is blinking once but there is no other adapter on the power line network so now I plug in an Ethernet cable that is already plugged into a router on the other end just to show you that the Ethernet light comes on solid which means it detects the Ethernet signal from the cable okay and now I remove this and put the other one and when I put the other one as you can see there is a very faint light next to power it's not completely dim but it's so faint that it seems as it's not even on and before it used to come on and now it doesn't come on at all and uh, if you of course if you plug into if you plug the cable in here nothing shows so in the past when this adapter failed the symptom was that the power light will show and when you plug in an ethernet source the ethernet light wouldn't show and I will show you what exactly causes this problem so let's open up this unit and see what's inside and what might be causing the problem it's already out of warranty so it doesn't hurt without opening it up okay and we see some capacitors on the board and the first obvious sign that I see are two capacitors which are kind of swollen if you look at this carefully there is a capacitor of 16 volt 1000 microfarad with the uh, swollen top and there's another one of 16 volt 220 microfarad with the uh, bulging top here and they should be flat for example like this one this one is flat and um, since the symptom is we don't get a light in the Ethernet and also the power it means the power is not being filtered correctly and most likely the capacitors have to be replaced it helps to have the right tool to desolder the capacitors and um, here I'm using a 0.8 millimeter desoldering wick which is very useful for this circuit board with such tight space and uh, you just have to apply heat onto the wick and push it around the uh, solder joint where the capacitor capacitor is soldered onto the board and let the wick suck up the uh, solder and make sure you don't touch other components because there are not a lot of space and after you desolder the connection for the capacitor you can gently remove it just make sure don't pull it too hard if there are any solder remaining at the joint because you might damage the PCB so here I made sure that there are no excessive solder left and look it was very easy to remove the bad capacitor and you can see it here so 
Now I would just have to mount a different, a new capacitor and make sure the negative is matching this white area as you can see that it indicates negative and once I mount the capacitor here I want to cut the excessive leads from here and here is one here is another one so you see you don't want to leave too too much of the leads sticking out and this is good enough now I just have to apply solder and secure the connections and as you can see I don't leave too much space but it's not too tightly sitting on the board either there is just you know enough space and some people like to mount it right on top of the board but I like to leave it with a little bit of space so now I will clean the solder soldering iron and uh, this is really not the right type of thickness that I want in my solder but it's all I have for now I would prefer a much thinner maybe 0.3 millimeter, 0.5 millimeter for this kind of uh, SMD work and um, this is probably 1.5 millimeter but it will do the job for now so uh, let me apply some solder to the tip of my southern iron and clean it off and um, I'm going to use the flux and to apply some flux to the new uh, capacitor uh, and uh, now I will take some solder and apply it just a little bit at a time because you already have the flux so the solder should attach quite easily and you don't need oh unfortunately I created too much solder here I have to use the wick to uh, clean it up After I cleaned up the excessive solder using the soldering wick, you can see the uh, new connections here and um, they look pretty good. So now the job is done. Now I will reassemble this adapter and that's the easy part. this in, make sure the screw holes match and put on the cover, put back the screws. So here is the adapter after I replaced two bad capacitors and you can see the power light is on and let me try to plug in the Ethernet cable to see if it will show some activity. Okay there you can see the light next to the Ethernet which means the two bad capacitors were the problem. 